More than half of the planet's population currently live in cities, and by 2050, two-thirds of the world inhabitants are expected to be city dwellers. This rate of urbanization has led to a construction boom of the likes never seen before in order to accommodate all new city residents, their workplaces and the different means of transportation. This requires an enormous amount of resources common in construction materials such as concrete, glass and asphalt. One of these are aggregates, which is an umbrella term for grain particulate materials, in plain English, crushed rock, sand and gravel. These aggregates need to be extracted from nature, and in 2017 it was estimated that the practice generated around 50 billion tons of aggregates. As the overall global economy keeps enjoying growth, and more and more people are searching for better opportunities in the cities, the use of aggregates seems to not be slowing down anytime soon. This has even created a new type of organized crime, which does not involve itself with drugs and arms trafficking, extortion or robberies, but instead with the illegal mining of sought after sand used in concrete mixes and industrial processes such as filtering. The countries with the highest GDP growth rates are principally developing or emerging markets, mainly in Asia and Africa. It is also Asia which is the leading aggregate producing region of the world, accounting for around 67% of total known global production. The overall availability and high shipping costs of aggregates relative to its massive volume and general low price means that it is normally consumed in the same region as where it is mined from. It can therefore be deduced that what is extracted in Asian countries is used in the same or neighboring countries. Although sand only accounts for around 10 to 15% of reported aggregated demand, the extraction of it poses far more environmental and social implications compared to, for example, gravel extraction. River sand mining has led to extensive pollution and to severe damages to river basins in India. Where it is practiced in maritime environments such as the seabed, it can have an impact on environment biodiversity and seabed flora and fauna, which is the case in the Western Baltic Sea. Moreover, the sand mining is associated with erosion, both along, for example, the coast of South Africa and in rivers in California, with the latter also impacting the coastal lines due to sediment depletion. While sand extraction may arguably pose an ecological threat to the environments where it is performed, there are also economic and social issues pertaining to mining and the aforementioned consequences, especially at a local level. Two examples are fishing and its vanishment due to the destruction of habitat and the negative impact on tourism, where erosion affects beaches. However, in an economic trade-off such issues can be overlooked. A new skyscraper filled with taxpayers or a bridge cutting travel times in half may weigh more financially than the preservation of natural habitats or postcard-worthy beaches. Tied to the socio-economic issues is the organized crime, composing of groups who use the often weak governance and widespread corruption for their own gain. There have been several reports of men literally stealing entire beaches and leaving nothing but rocks in its place. Using threats and other coercive measures, so-called sand mafias across the world managed to feed demanding industries with sand from illegal mining. If you wonder why sand isn't simply extracted from the vast deserts of the planet, it is because there is a difference between sand and sand. Wind-smoothed grains are useless as an aggregator, compared to the angular sand from water deposits. Despite being built in the desert, the sand used for the concrete in Dubai's Burj Khalifa was imported from Australia. While the use of sand exceeds its natural renewal rate and sees no decrease anytime soon, the issue of mining is one separate from illegal mining, yet closely connected. The lack of awareness and information implicates the absence of monitoring systems and regulation policies to curb the problem of sand theft. Since the problem is global, suggestions of micro-measures applicable to all cases are difficult to make, with the exception of fighting corruption and implementing adequate deterrences. But a comprehensive approach with measures on a macro scale may have the same implications, effectively tackling the issue of illegal mining. This includes research and development, further manipulating construction materials in the same way concrete has been engineered to this day, ideally enabling a decreased use of sand. A more controversial suggestion is taxation on aggregates, incentivizing the use of alternative materials. Where possible, taxes can be levied on sand from certain sources such as the seabed and rivers, making for example less detrimental but more expensive dam sand more attractive. Such measures would reduce the attractiveness of sand, possibly to an extent rendering local measures targeting illegal mining unnecessary for that sake itself. However, this is not made without consequences. It is not far-fetched to assume that making sand expensive could make a dent in a nation's economic activity, which raises a question. Shouldn't the Asian countries enjoy the same expansion as the Western world did during a century of industrialization and rapid growth? 
Well, yes they should, but at what cost? Sand is not endless, and its extraction may destroy ecosystem after ecosystem until there is no feasible concrete aggregate left in the area. Thank you for watching yet another Global Outlooks video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about current issues from around the world. Until next time.